Amsterdam. The Venice of the North is the capital of the Netherlands and is renowned for its historical attractions, amazing art, and its well-preserved old neighborhoods. It's one of the most culturally diverse cities on the planet, drawing more than 5,000 international visitors each year. Today, we'll be exploring Amsterdam with the general manager of the Hilton Amsterdam. And sharing the stage is Remy Orlemans, the creator and owner of Amsterdam's De Deli and Bori Box, with his take on this incredible city. We are excited to explore this great European capital city on this episode of Destination Everywhere, Amsterdam. Welcome to Destination Everywhere with hospitality and travel entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. Having traveled to over a hundred countries, Todd and Andy bring you unique perspectives with celebrities in the know, hospitality experts, and native connoisseurs to discover must-dos and inspirational destinations to plan your next trip for business or pleasure. So pack your bags and get ready as we bring you Destination Everywhere with Todd and Andy. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Destination Everywhere. I'm Andy McNeil, along with Todd Bloodworth. We're excited to bring you Amsterdam this week. It's such a great, vibrant city in Europe and so much history. Uh, Todd, you've been there many, many times. What do you remember the most? We did We did a couple of meetings at a few different hotels and at the convention center. And everything around the convention center is it's it's just it's it's a lot of fun. It's very walkable, lots of shops and restaurants. So for meetings and events, it's a perfect city to do it. But, uh, you know, I, I just remember kind of walking around, um, kind of I had an expectation and that uh, expectation kind of was much different, not an expectation, what is it? A, uh, I, had, I had preconceived ideas of what I thought Amsterdam was and it wasn't that at all. It's, it's absolutely beautiful, it's historic. Um, again, lots, uh, lots of canals. I, was, I, I didn't realize there was that much water in Amsterdam. I don't know why I thought it was a little drier, but it was just a beautiful city. And uh, and then, of course, I remember the Anne Frank house and you hear the stories about the tree and uh, the occupation. There's just a lot. I, you know, I, I, you could talk about it for days, but every neighborhood is different and it was a lot of fun. All right. Well, the name Amst- Amsterdam uh, actually derives from Amstel Dam, which was a dam that was built uh, to control the flooding that was happening in the city. Um, but it was a, originally just a small uh, fishing village that expanded over the centuries to what it is today, which is uh, one of the most important trade ports in Europe um, to uh, some of the uh, top financial sectors in the world. So uh, Todd, the city is like over seven year, 700 years old, right? It's really old. And, um, you know, although the, the capital, uh, although it is the capital of the Netherlands, um, and, and obviously it's it's a Dutch country, you know, I think people... Uh, so it's the Netherlands. The people are Dutch. Um, Amsterdam is the capital, um, but the seat of government is actually located at The Hague. And I can also remember being a kid and hearing The Hague and thinking it was a specific place, but it's actually a city in yeah. Amsterdam. Uh, I, I, with the word the in front of it kind of voiced through me uh, when I was growing up. Um, and it also has just a ton of museums. Um, it's got a lot of culture, a lot of history. The Van Gogh Museum is there. Uh, the Rembrandt House Museum is there. And of course, I mentioned the Anne Frank House. Um, just a, a wonderful, walkable city. Absolutely great. Yeah, we're going to spend a lot of time. We've got two great guests. Let's talk about our first guest. And uh, we're going to be visiting uh, the Hilton Amsterdam. Sure, we have. We're, we're going to be right back. We're going to be speaking with Alessio Colavecchio. And he's the general manager of the Hilton Amsterdam. So we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Andy McNeil at Destination Everywhere, and we're so excited to have our next guest, Alessio Colavecchio, the general manager of the Hilton Amsterdam. Alessio, welcome. Hi, Andy. Great to great to meet you again. Yeah, great to see you. We love we love your city. We love your hotel. We've been there many many times, and we wanted to share it with all of our guests, um, whether they're coming for a business meeting or whether they're coming just to see your beautiful, beautiful city, which I love so much. And I'm excited to talk to you because you've lived in many places. You've lived in uh, Sicily. You've lived in Madrid. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to talk a little bit about just you personally and tell us a little bit about growing up in Sicily. 
Well, yes, yes, thanks. My, my, my home country, Italy, but actually we, we always like to say Sicilian, uh, not Italian. Um, it's, it's quite a large island. Uh, all my family comes from there, grew up there, studied there. Uh, but since my 14, I had this, you know, in Italy, we get quite a long summer holidays, three months. Uh, and I was very bored, you know, I, I like to play to the church, etc. But when I was 13, 12, actually, I already wanted to work and in the kitchen. That was my dream, a cook, being a cook, being a chef. And my father brought me to this friend of him in a hotel at the, in Taormina, C, uh, which is quite a touristic place. Yeah. He'd say that, listen, he wants to work, please let him do something. Uh, but he wants to work in the kitchen. And, and, and the general manager say, no, you know, you're crazy. There are temperatures which are absurd. He's 12 <laughs> years old. This guy cannot do it. So that was my end of my cook uh, and chef uh, career. Uh, but then when I was 14, eventually I got into a, one of the hotels in Taormina uh, every three months, every year. And I, and I was doing a bit of everything, cleaning up uh, bar, uh, restaurants, etc. Eventually I realized, well, I, that's what I want to do. I want to stay within the hotel business. Uh, and I was 22, 23, you know, great hotels, fantastic place, but not a lot of big chains, you know, career wise, yeah. it's quite, quite different. Let's put it in this way. And I moved to the Netherlands for my first time in 99. And uh, guess what? I started here at the Hilton Amsterdam as a waiter uh, in the restaurant, Italia restaurant, uh, Roberto. So that was my first job outside Italy was at the Hilton Amsterdam in 99. Um, I stayed uh, in and out within Hilton since then. Uh, and this is actually my fifth time, fifth time I'm back at the Hilton Amsterdam now. Let's talk a little bit about where it's actually located. Tell us about the neighborhood and what's special about it. Yes, Hilton Amsterdam is, uh, first of all, let me just say how small Amsterdam is, yeah? because it's important that we don't compare sizes of you know, New York, London, uh, uh, where you really need to travel, you know, for uh, in the tube. And, yeah, and it's very, very plain. Absolutely. You know, I imagine that from north, which is Central Station, to let's say out south, old south, which is where we are, is 25 minutes by tram. You know, that's that's to give the idea of. Uh, and I always say we always measure by bike. 20 minutes by bike. <laughs> by bike. A so great biking city for sure, absolutely. For sure, uh, water and bikes. That's what uh, Amsterdam is all about. And um, Old South, so Hout South in, in Dutch, uh, is where the hotel is, lo is located. Uh, is in the Apollo land. Why I, I mentioned the name of the street? Because Apollo, Minerva, so they were all area dedicated to um, the meets because this is the quarter, the, the, the area of the 1928 Olympic Games. Oh, okay. Interesting. All the, street, all the street have this name. In fact, the Olympic Stadium is just uh, five, six minutes biking from the hotel. Uh, but also what is it, uh, very important about this location is the proximity to everything. So if you are a business guest, uh, you are straight on walking, uh, like 15, 15 minutes walking, you are at the uh, World Trade Center of Amsterdam from one side. If you walk on the other side for 10 minutes, you are in what we say regarding Spain, we're talking about Retiro at the Central Park. Well, yeah, we yep. also have our Central Park, which is called Fondel Park. And it's just seven, eight minutes uh, towards uh, uh, south, towards north. If you, were, if you go east 10 minutes, you arrive to the most renewed museums of the Netherlands. So the Rijksmuseum, where the Rembrandt is, um, the Van Gogh Museum, uh, the State Lake Museum, which is like a modern art uh, museum, and the concert hall. So that's very walking distance. From so the everything's in walking distance from the hotel. Correct. Primarily. Yet uh, not very noisy, uh, very, very uh, residential feeling, very local feeling rather than very, um, let's say, how noisy can be the city center of Amsterdam. But another thing of uh, uh, why I actually find it so special is where our lobby is. So okay. our lobby is, uh, if you will stand uh, in our lobby, you will see there is a middle line. That's not a coincidence. The line is actually a historical line that is called the line of Berlage. Berlage was the architect that in 1918 uh, was in charge uh, from the city council to develop the city of Amsterdam into south because the, what we call the, 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 the semicircle canals were already full at the 90, okay. 1900. So where the lobby is, is where Mr. Berlag actually designed the, ex, the, the, uh, the old development of Amsterdam into South. 
And as a matter of fact, if you stayed on this line, which is the line of the lobby, you will have no buildings in front of you until the ring of the highway, which is around four or five kilometers. And if you go on our Excel lounge at the 10th floor and you still stay on this line, you will see that it was inspired by the lines of the states of New York. And in fact, as of the lobby of Hilton Amsterdam, the way of the development of the city from semicircles becomes the lines of the states. Oh, so how interesting. It's an incredible uh, story and is only one of it. But when we talk about location, we, we like to emphasize how well located it is in terms of business, in terms of leisure, um, uh, in terms of local leisure, local business, because we want to be a local hotel. Um, so also our neighborhood is what we really care about. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about the history because there's a lot of history with the hotel and you guys have a connection. I love this. You have a connection with the Beatles, right? Well, it's behind me. Uh, <laughs> there it is right there. That's my office. I, can, I cannot stop looking at them. John Lennon, Lennon and Yoko Ono. Well, that was uh, fantastic. I mean, 1969, uh, Imagine World was their marriage. Uh, they were uh, traveling from UK to their dream, which was marrying uh, and the Seine in Paris, right? Okay. By the river. Uh, it was quite a controversial time. They were not always welcome at the time, the two. Uh, and actually, they were not allowed to marry in, in Paris. So they ended up in uh, Gibraltar, which was of uh, English and there they didn't have any issue of paper uh, documentations etc so eventually they got married there but they came back by car to Paris because there where they spend their their honeymoon and then they wanted to go around promoting using their honeymoon to promote their beliefs right the peace uh, remember the Vietnam absolutely Vietnam peace war, of love absolutely the, yeah the, all, all that what was happening at that time and they drove from Paris to the Amsterdam Hilton and these words I'm mentioning is not Alessio Coravecchio mentioning, but it's actually what they, what he, uh, John Lennon, mentioned in the lyrics of the song, The Ballad of John e. Yoko. In this song, he describes exactly what happened. So we went from um, Southampton through Paris to Gibraltar, through Paris to the Amsterdam Hilton, talking for a week in bed about our beliefs and pieces. So these are the lyrics of the ballad of John Yogo. We really invite uh, the audience to listen to. It's not very well known, but it's, you, get in, you fall in love straight away when you hear about uh, it. And, and they spend really one week in bed in the room 902 at the time. It's room 902, everybody. Okay, we got it. I was gonna ask that question. No, it's 702. Oh yeah, 702, time, okay. At that time it was 902 because the floors were counted differently, but it's exactly the same room in the same floor. Uh, and it's, it's the famous Animal Suite uh, 702. So it's a fantastic story. And, and this suite is, of course, our, our gem, right? Uh, that, um, that, uh, that is really representing our history, our hotel, and our beliefs as well, when we talk about uh, how we see Hilton Amsterdam developing as well into the future. Great. And let's talk a little bit about a great story, by the way. And let's talk a little bit about the restaurant you have there, because it's always nice to have a really uh, beautiful restaurant um, at the hotel you're staying at. And you guys certainly have that with yours. Yes, that's, that's called Roberto's, a name to a very uh, famous general manager of this hotel, uh, Roberto Paia, uh, who started this restaurant. And uh, what, what we like to, as I said, you know, we really like to be a place for the locals before having an hotel. For well, that, that's a sign of a great hotel, right? If you can... Uh, uh, cater to the locals, have a great restaurant and uh, activities in and around the hotel, uh, really sustains the hotel even during downtime and tour season, but also uh, right. makes it part of the community. Correct. And, you know, it's, it's all about pure Italian kitchen. It's simple as that. Italian kitchen doesn't really exist because it exists regional kitchen. Italy from north to south is very different. Very different, uh, so yeah. So we really promote the, that idea of regional kitchen, very seasonal. Uh, the, the pure ingredients, so you don't need to mess too much around with ingredients. That's one of our beliefs. Uh, and the, the, the restaurant has been fully redone in 2010. At the time, I was actually here as a director of operations, and it's really inspired to the 50s. You know, the, the, the oh, Sofia nice. Golden Times, the Aries Bar in Venice, for whoever has been in Venice at the Aries Bar by Cipriani. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, by Cipriani's. Now, is this the same restaurant that you actually started at when you started at the Hotel Amsterdam? 
exactly the same Roberto same wow. play what year did what year did it, did it begin yes but but very re but renovated by the way it's not that 30 years old <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, but yes that's the one so lots of feeling about uh, I, for me special obviously right it's uh, absolutely it reminds me a lot and it's something that again we put a lot of effort in our outlets so not only Roberto's but also we have a fantastic uh, uh, garden terrace, our Alf Moon Lounge bar, situated at the other side of the, of the hotel, which is on the canal. So we have this fantastic garden uh, with, with trees, a, theatri a theatrical scene, because we switch step, steps looking at the water, uh, which in the summertime for six months a year, it's, it's, it's really unique uh, for both locals, but also for, uh, for um, events, weddings, uh, you know, you can start by boat as well or arrive by boat. So the hotel has really two phases and, and we really like to have that, uh, to give two different feelings to, to guests. It really is a spectacular uh, view back there and uh, being able to arrive uh, after a day back on a boat to the hotel is just a, a very special thing. And I, I loved uh, how wide and open it is and you can sit and just relax. Um, either uh, enjoying the view or taking on some of the activities. Well, Alessio, thank you so much for your time today. Where can our it's listeners been. learn more about the hotel and you? Well, you know, we are obviously on all the channels, but what we, we are very active, and I'm very active as well, is on both on all the various LinkedIn, Facebook, because we believe that, you know, we need to, we need to serve all type of uh, Absolutely. People. Uh, and uh, and uh, Instagram uh, and uh, etc. So we are well, you can find us. You can find us. Alessio, thank you so much for your time. We're excited to uh, come back and visit you at the Hilton Amsterdam. Such a beautiful place. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day. This episode is brought to you by AMI. Need help discovering that next destination for your group or meeting? Then go to AmericanMeetings.com and click on Destinations. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Destination Everywhere, Amsterdam. Now it's time for our destination favorites, the places that we like to pick out and share with you, great places to be. And first thing we're going to talk about is just biking the city, okay? That's just, uh, you just got to do that when you're there. There's over 800,000 bikes in the city. There's actually more bikes than people. And it's just one of those cities that that's the way to see it. You can go from neighborhood to neighborhood, museum to museum. You can do it by yourself and just rent. There's tours, but you've got to do it. It's a great way to take that jet lag out when you get there the first day. And another great uh, spot to stop by, it's called the Ordon neighborhood um, or Jordan. Um, and I know a lot of these, uh, a lot of the the, the Dutch names are, are going to be difficult for uh, especially uh uh, American travelers pronounce, but um, this used to be a working class neighborhood, but it's kind of evolved into cafes and bars and restaurants, boutiques, uh, the Norder Market. Um, it's a farmer's market and flea market all in one, and it offers organic produce and antiques. And the neighborhood is also home to the must see, of course, the um, Anne Frank house, which everybody knows Absolutely. the story of Anne Frank from, from the stories growing up and in school. But um, just a wonderful neighborhood and absolutely beautiful. So, Todd, what was your experience when you went to the Anne Frank house? I, I did. A, it, it helps kind of put it into context. You, you, you. It's it's a house. It's in the middle of a city. It's tall. It's unassuming, and um, you think about what what the family went through, and it's quite scary. Um, but again, you know, it, you would walk right by it if if you didn't know what you were looking for. It's. Uh, um, and I think for some reason, uh, I think I heard that the tree is no longer there that she refers to in the book. Uh, I think that was removed, but don't quote me on that. But it was it was just a, a, a time for, for a little bit of reflection. I think it was just a, a very sad time. Yeah. And seeing the small place where she actually hid is, is really, really impactful. And not just her. It was uh, uh, many of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, for, for a long period of time. But. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a must see and it's one of those uh, never forget moments.
Absolutely. And our next location is the Vestergas. I think I'm saying that correctly. It's an old Vestergas. industrial complex uh, uh, created in 2003 that's been converted into bars and restaurants and an entertainment complex. You'll find food markets, galleries, and performance venues. It's just a lot of fun to go to. It's a great place to do a late afternoon and into the early evening. And uh, we got a, a tip for you. We want you to check out the Muscle and Gin. It's a restaurant that specializes in seafood and great gin and tonic, different types of drinks. And then we're going to continue on to another museum. This is the Rijksmuseum. And this is Amsterdam's most popular museum with collections going back over 800 years. And here you can see the works of, of many Dutch masters, uh, Rembrandt, uh, Vermeer, uh, as well as works by Van Gogh. The museum also houses a vast collection of European and Asian art. And in 2002, the museum opened a branch at the Amsterdam airport. So if you do have some extra time uh, arriving or departing, um, go check it out. It was the first ever museum in an airport. Oh, that's, that's very, very cool. Now, something we talked about a lot on our Copenhagen uh, episode was going through the canals. And it's much like that in Amsterdam as well. They're very similar in that case. And there's lots of different ways you can tour the canals. You can do a historic tour. You can do a wine and cheese tour. You, there's a luxurious dinner cruises that you can do. Uh, there's even a pizza cruise um, and a light festival cruise. So it's just, uh, there's something for everybody. So uh, we really want you and encourage you to do that. It's a great thing to do with groups or family and friends and a, a, just another wonderful way to see the city. I know the river cruises, again, that's one of those things. You see these huge flat boats going under the bridges and the clearance sometimes, uh, it, it's just kind of spectacular to watch. They've got the timing down perfectly. You know, uh, I've seen in South Florida where we are that people don't get those clearances exactly uh, <laughs> hit them at the right time. But yeah, that's, that's uh, for it's, sure. It's, they're, they're beautiful, uh, beautiful boats on the canals. Um, another thing, yep. if you want to talk about some shopping, yeah, um, the Nine Streets, and this is a shopping district with one of a kind stores, cafes, galleries and boutiques. It's so cool. It's so much Very fun. pedestrian friendly. Yeah. Uh, attracts a lot of locals as well. You can pretty much find anything in this neighborhood from vintage clothing to art to antiques and some of the best restaurants around. So definitely go check out uh, the neighborhood Nine Streets. So those are our destination favorites. There's so much to do in this wonderful city. We could have talked about it all day long, but we can't because we've got our new, our next guest. This is Remy Orlemans. I'm going to be speaking to him about his restaurant, The Deli, which is a small, very unique restaurant. And we can't wait to share it with you. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to this episode of Destination Everywhere Amsterdam. I'm Andy McNeil, and I'm here with Remy Orlemans, who is the owner of De Deli, which is a great shop in Amsterdam. Remy, I can't wait to hear not only about the deli, but first I want to start with you. So let's talk a little bit about how you got to Amsterdam, what your uh, journey was there, what you've done in the past. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks for uh, for having me here. I'm glad to uh, to share a little bit of the insights from uh, this beautiful city to everybody. Um, so for myself, uh, I've, uh, I origin from the south of the Netherlands, uh, Berg op Zoom, this area. Uh, I did a hotel school in Maastricht, which is one of the, the three hotel schools which we have here. Well, now there's a couple of more, but Maastricht uh, is where I studied. And then I moved in 2010 uh, to Amsterdam full time. Uh, so yeah, almost 12 years uh, living here and enjoying this uh, beautiful city and beautiful vibe. Um, yeah, and since 2016, um, I opened my own. Uh, well, by uh, back then it was a little restaurant, and it changed over the last couple of years. So the name is uh, the Delhi, and we are in a beautiful area in Amsterdam East, uh, the Plantage Buurt, as it's uh, said. So very, uh, very special neighborhoods in uh, in Amsterdam. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so, well, it, it looks just fantastic online. I haven't uh, been, and I can't wait to visit you next time in I'm in Amsterdam. But tell us a little bit about the experience people are going to have uh, when they come into your into your restaurant. Well, you know how I see it. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, corporate work uh, over the last uh, well, uh, almost twenty years. Uh, which is a lot of energy always and you're working with people and you're working with big companies and whatsoever so I really feel that also uh, a restaurant or a cafe or even uh, the smallest coffee bar uh, or street food even uh, is always about this energy and uh, that's what we really try to put in everything what we bring in the deli 
Uh, basically, I believe also that people want to have a great experience, which is not everywhere uh, possible here in Amsterdam. Uh, so, yeah, we try to give this experience on a personal level, uh, on an energy level, but also with the food we we present and uh, the type of dishes we do. It's not that complicated, but it's handmade, homemade, you know, sourced by really good uh, with uh, really good suppliers. And uh, yeah, it's an eclectic blend of what you can taste uh, at the deli. Uh, we also sell those products to take home, actually. So while you're having this experience at the deli, maybe you get inspired to cook for your friends or family, and then you bring that energy home and share it, you know. So, yeah, let's say it's a, it's a place of energy to uh, to share that with you on the spot and you can take it home and, uh, yeah, to make a lot of people very happy. That's a little bit maybe the, the, the summarize of that, yeah. Excellent. So do you have a favorite item that you particularly like or what are you guys known for? Well, we uh, yesterday uh, was a very busy day because also it was a lot of holidays. And, uh, you know, we make our own sandwich pulled pork and we have a green egg Kamado grill and it's for 16, 17 hours uh, on that Kamado. Oh, wow. so that's definitely that sounds delicious. Of, yeah, we make our own barbecue sauce with black garlic. And uh, so people really are a fan of that. But we also serve a beautiful dish with uh, it's a sandwich with uh, rosemary manchego. And it's a manchego. On the outside, it has this lard with rosemary and it won three, four times already gold in the international cheese competition. And it's with a mango chutney as well. And so it's a very wow. strange combination of flavors. Also, that one is quite, uh, yeah, let's say uh, famous. And of course, there's a, there's nothing on our menu, which I personally, you know, do not like. <laughs> I guess not, huh? Yeah. So, and the team also really stands behind what we do. And at the same time, we are in this situation where everything gets more and more expensive. So we want to give you this experience based on quality products uh, but for a very, you know, reasonable price where you really feel like, yes, this is where I would come back for. And uh, in these times, it's uh, challenging uh, at the same time to to keep that level uh, reasonable uh, with all the price increases, et cetera, which we have to deal with. Yeah. So let's move on to the neighborhood of where uh, your uh, your restaurant is located. Tell us a little bit about the neighborhood. What's exactly around there? So when our uh, our listeners come by and visit you, what else can they do in that area? Yeah, so... You know, the city center of Amsterdam, just behind me, I live on the Damrak, which is like the most busy place. Oh, uh, by the way, be be beautiful, beautiful backdrop, by the way. Yeah, this is the, you know, the red light district is just behind me. And of course, there's some uh, hidden uh, gems here. But the east area, uh, which is uh, between here and the Plantagebuurt. So the Plantagebuurt is just outside of this center part. And as you go, that small bridge, which leads into the Plantagebuurt, you will actually, you know, you see the trees, you see more green and, and you get this different kind of vibe uh, once you enter there. And it's also because the first thing you will encounter almost is the, the Hortus Botanicus. It's uh, our botanical garden, uh, which is beautiful to visit. Uh, there's a lot of museum, uh, museum, which uh, we have in the area. It has also a very dense history uh, when it comes up to the war history. So there's a lot of history to discover there, uh, resistance museum, etc. The zoo is just across the deli. Uh, so there's yeah, tell also us a little bit about that. I know a lot of we have a lot of families that travel from our podcast. Tell us a little bit about the zoo and what makes it special. Yeah, the zoo is like the city zoo vibe. So you have the tram, uh, which you hear while you are, you know, in the middle of uh, all the animals. And they really did a good job over the last couple of years to really uh, improve all the facilities for the animals. Uh, next to the zoo, there is also Micropia, which is basically, uh, yeah, well, as the word say, a museum which only dives into this microbacteria spectrum. Beautiful also with kids to spend time. And two months ago, they just opened uh, the big museum, as it's called. It's about the connection between the human body and nature. Um, oh, wow. and they, they reused actually uh, about 85% of all the old materials in that building, which is from uh, 1885. Um, and this is all in a very historical, beautiful state, uh, and it's very interactive as well. You could do a combination of the zoo, combine it with Micropia, combine it also with the big museum, and they even have this special combination ticket. So it's really uh, worth spending. Well, yeah, and, and stop by the deli as well, right? For exactly. Lunch. Yeah. So we are <laughs> open, you know, from eight o'clock in the morning. So you can start with us. You can have an intermezzo, you know, with lunch. And maybe end the afternoon with a nice glass of wine and some rosemary manchego cheese. Who knows? <laughs> oh, that's great. Tell us a little bit about the river and what people can do on the river. Well, you mean the uh, Amstel River in Amsterdam? or you yes. mean the, Yeah, well, the, of course, uh, the canals in Amsterdam. I mean, uh, if you look at, uh, at the amount of water we have here, 
uh, it's beautiful to book little boat tours, of course, to explore them. Um, I think there is, uh, you know, the big boats are just behind me. Uh, maybe you see them sometimes, uh, but there's also a lot of smaller ones. And I would recommend to do that and to book your, let's say, six to eight people boat tour. Uh, it's very good possible to do that for a reasonable price. Uh, from the 1st of December, the light festival will start and it's okay. a route which goes through the canals and it's the whole month of December and January as well. Uh, and it will take you along uh, the Herengracht and, you know, you have all these light sculptures by artists and while you are on the boat, uh, you can explore them. You can also do the tour while walking, but uh, I think by boat, it gives a different vibe of the city. You are lower, so the street sides are higher. You have these beautiful views, you know, into the canal houses, uh, and I would really do that. And oh. uh, especially in, in winter, it's, of course, awesome to be in these canals. You're a little bit outside of the wind. Um, and in summer, I would recommend to do a little bit more tours outside of the canals as well, because there's beautiful areas which, uh, yeah, which you can explore and also swim outside of the city center. So uh, yeah, is, uh, is, is, some, is summer your favorite time of year or do you have a special time of year that you like or do you just like all seasons there? Well, I like all seasons because I think uh, every season has its charm. I think the transition from one to the other is always we have to get used to. So in the daily, for example, our windows and the whole facade can open up. And now with the weather uh, changing to uh, 12, 13 degrees, you know, we have to close everything. And it's like this mental switch, like, ah, OK. Yeah. But hey, you know, we make a beautiful terrace with uh, some smart solutions uh, without using gas heaters or so. We still make it a cozy terrace for the winter time. And in the city, uh, of course, the, the Christmas decorations are already out there now, which is quite early, I think. But uh, it makes a beautiful city. And in the end, uh, I think Amsterdam has a lot to offer uh, also for the winter times. Yeah, so I've, ne I've never been to Amsterdam in, in the winter. How much snow do you guys get typically? Well, it, it really depends. It's not that much over the last couple of years. But I think although uh, last year we had uh, like a week or so, uh, and that's exceptional because uh, I think when it's uh, snowing in the Netherlands is most of the time just for a day or two uh, over the last couple of years at least. Yeah, so uh, yeah. And hopefully if it's uh, starting to, to get cold again, we uh, have ice skates and uh, one of the most beautiful things here is the ice skating on the canals. Nice. So if you really have a good winter, then this is a fantastic experience where the whole city will be on the canals uh, ice skating. So they're also oh, well, it pretty much the transforms water. the city, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Do people actually commute via ice skate like they do in, um, I know they do that in Canada. They do that in Winnipeg, I believe. They actually shut down the rivers and then people actually, you know, use it like walking. Yeah, no, here uh, it's really for entertaining purposes, I would say. And, you know, the, the also the times that the canals are, are really frozen is so exceptional uh, nowadays. So, yeah. Gotcha, is, gotcha. You commute mostly by bike, which is a very good tip. Also, when you visit Amsterdam, to really look carefully before you cross any street, because the bikes normally don't really pay attention to who wants to uh, cross the street. So, especially with kids. And uh, yeah, it's uh, you better look four times uh, because uh, yeah, it's crazy here. Yeah. Well, that that is a great local tip, and and I agree with you. I've never seen so many bikes. Well, maybe maybe in China, but you guys definitely rival them when it comes to the number of people that actually use uh, bikes as a mode of transportation. Another a great way to see the city too, right? That you guys have some of the best laid out bike paths in, in Europe. Yeah, true. And it's also very easy to rent bikes here in Amsterdam. Uh, and I would definitely recommend if you're a little bit, let's say, uh, used to riding a bike, do it because it, it gets you from A to B really fast. Uh, and you see uh, yeah, a lot of beautiful parts. Uh, but of course, be careful. Yeah, so this is the this is the trick. <laughs> Absolutely. So you will be blind by the locals otherwise. <laughs> so uh, when we were talking earlier, I'm just going back to uh, you personally and your your passion for your uh, restaurant, but you also talked a little bit about something that you're now a, a, a breath coach, right? You actually can teach people how to use breathing to calm down, to enjoy life more. Tell us a little bit about that and how you got into it. Yeah. So, you know, basically uh, I was doing corporate events, uh, as I said, for many years. So uh, I had my own events agency with uh, two companions and we were in, uh, in Asia, so in China and in Singapore, in Brazil, uh, here in the Netherlands as well. And so we were doing a lot of international events and I was switched on for 24 hours per day, so to say, uh, until a point where, you know, we decided, okay, this is too much to uh, to handle for us. Uh, so let's uh, make a move 
at least I felt this is time to make a move uh, for myself. So we stopped doing uh, the businesses back in 2016. And by the time I really felt like I, you know, I overused my energy resources a lot. Uh, yeah, I the, event, the event business will definitely do that to you for sure. Yeah. So, and, and it's really easy. Uh, and also here, you know, you keep on working and uh, I was flying a lot from, from China back to Brazil and uh, in all these different time zones, then of course in Amsterdam, I could not really find my peace because it was also hectic when I was here. Um, so it was a good decision and I found breathwork, uh, you know, the Wim Hof method, probably a lot of people will know, which is basically not the best methodology when you are stressed out because uh, it lets you breathe quite fast and rapidly. Uh, so I learned later on that there is a, 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 yeah, a lot of different uh, tools are much better to change your state of being because breath is the only way to influence your, yeah, your state of being, your nervous system. Uh, so it's like a gas pedal and a brake. Uh, I took a course uh, almost three years with uh, Kasper Vermeule and his team, uh, the Breathwork Masterclass. And, you know, it learned me so much uh, about it and also about how the human body is actually much better off when you are in this more relaxed, calm state. So you have really literally more space to create and more space to do things and also to bring that energy across to uh, to other people. So, yeah, that has been a big change since 2016. And uh, I'm working now on the next steps where I will offer, uh, you know, breathwork sessions as well. Uh, so I'm I'm really new in the field of really putting it out there, but uh, it already gave me a lot of inspiration for all the other work what I do. For example, also in the Delhi to be really focused and uh, see what we can do to, you know, optimize people's state and 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 uh, look at that part. Yeah. Now, Remy, you talked a little bit about bringing the positive energy of Breathworks into your uh, restaurant, the Delhi. Tell us a little bit how you do that. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the Delhi is a place where people should experience this positive energy. Uh, it's basically, for me, a hidden practice, I would almost say, because when uh, people come to the Delhi, I can really see or feel what state they are. And maybe they don't need this coffee, but I can inspire them by serving them a beautiful raw cacao, which has great benefits for your body, has great nutritional value, but does not give you this jittery caffeine kind of uh, state. So, uh, and also with the foods we serve. So, yeah, I don't know if you know, but uh, Manchego is a superfood, actually. Uh, so, yeah, we try to find those kind of things uh, which can add something uh, to your life rather than only give you, you know, uh, the sweet temptations are nice. But if you can balance it out by choosing some, uh, you know, some other options which actually benefit your uh, state and your, your being, you know, it's great. And then if it tastes good, it's even better. So you can go to the deli, you can get a great sandwich with a side of uh, breathing exercises, huh? Yeah, that would be a great recipe, actually, to put that on the menu. And, you know, a lot of time people really come in to just enjoy. And if you bring it in an unexpected way, you, you see people just leave our, our place with a big smile. So that's nice. That is nice. Fantastic. So now when our listeners are listening to this, and thank you for your time today, where can they find you online to learn more about the deli and, and you? Uh, well, first of all, the Instagram page, of course, uh, the Delhi Plantage Butte. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can share some notes uh, about that page. Uh, my personal Instagram is uh, Remy Oelemans. You will find me there. LinkedIn uh, is, of course, uh, also the profile which uh, which I have to uh, yeah to be in touch. And you know, people who are interested in in uh, for example, when they are here in Amsterdam to get some tips or whatsoever, I'm more than happy to help. And uh, even when people come to the Delhi, I always ask them, you know, do you have a plan? Do you know where to go? Because I want to give these inside tips and I want to share as much as we can, because I love when I'm in a city somewhere that somebody gives me this one secret tip, which totally makes your trip awesome. You know, this is the, the best thing you can experience, I think, when you're traveling. Yeah, you want to enrich uh, yourself with these beautiful things and not just go by standard books, say, ah, this is what everybody does. So this should be good. Absolutely. And I, and I can't agree more. You got to get to know a local to, to find all the, the great haunts and, and where to go. And I'll make sure that um, we put all of those links in the show notes so people can reach out to you and stop by and have a, an award-winning sandwich. So uh, Remy Orlemans, thank you so much for your time. The owner of the Delhi in Amsterdam, make sure you look it up when you attend. Remy, thanks for your time today. Thank you too. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in Amsterdam soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Take care. Right. Thank you. So Andy, that was a great conversation with Remy. What were some of the highlights uh, that, that you took away when you were speaking with him? 
Well, I mean, it was such a long interview, probably one of the longest interviews I've ever done here on the show. And um, so we actually couldn't actually put it all in. So he spent a lot of time talking about the different Christmas markets you can go to and the wonderful light festival that they have and really spending how everything really revolves around the canals in Amsterdam. So, uh, you know, if you're there in the winter, definitely check those out. But just really enjoyed uh, talking to Remy and and hearing from a local it makes a, a huge difference to talk to somebody who actually lives there and knows all the secrets. Well, and and another thing that you know we just have to mention this one flower because we're talking about Amsterdam, yeah. and it is the tulip. And um, you can go to a picking garden on Dam Square and uh, pick tulips. Just so you know, they're absolutely beautiful. They come in all colors. And, and probably the best time of year to do that is in the spring. <laughs> they're absolutely <laughs> right? you know, amazing when you see these things start to bloom. But um, uh, Tulip Day is actually a major event in Amsterdam. And it's actually uh, January 21st. I oh, think. wow. It's early. Right. It, it fluctuates around that time in January. So um, it's the third Saturday of January every year. So excellent. Excellent. But well, that I'm wraps it up for this episode of Destination Everywhere. I'm Andy McNeil. And I'm Todd Bloodworth. And we'd like to thank our team. We have our copywriters, Louis Pedraza and Kim Jordan, Andy Fernandez, our creative director, Rusty McNeely and Louis Pedraza, our podcast producers, uh, the Lightship Studio team. So also please be sure to subscribe, rate and review the show on your preferred podcast app or by going to www.destinationeverywhere.com. We look forward to speaking with you next time on Destination Everywhere. Safe travels. You've just tuned in to another episode of Destination Everywhere with travel and hospitality entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. To access the show notes and other helpful resources, visit destination-everywhere.com. Join us again next week for another bucket list filled show as we feature another travel worthy destination. Until next time, travel well and be safe out there.